Hi everyone and welcome to the tutorial for Endless Road. As always, let me start by featuring my new top tier patrons and this week that honor goes to Jonas and Mathieu. Mathieu being one of the very first followers and subscribers here on YouTube when I started doing these tutorials. If you want to make a contribution to the channel while gaining early access to new videos or access to notation and tablature files, then please head over to the Patreon page and join up as well. If you want to make a contribution to the channel without monthly fees, there is a PayPal donate link down below in the description too. Endless Road has been consistently one of the most requested songs on the channel and it was of course voted for in the recent polling uh, top 10. When the vote came in, I didn't really know what Endless Road was about or how the song exactly went. I knew the opening section, that was about it. I realized this was something special when I started looking for a YouTube video on which I could base my transcription. And the video I found contained a little spoken intro of Tommy telling us that Endless Road is basically three different songs just joined together. Immediately, I thought, that sounds like a lot of work. And it was, and it will be for you too. The transcription alone is 15 pages long. When I finished that transcription, I realized I, there's no way I can do this tutorial like I usually do, recording it in one take and then splitting it in two parts. This will have to be recorded in several sittings and will have to be divided in more parts than usual. I was planning on doing three parts with this video covering the verse and the chorus taking about 30 minutes. Well, that plan went out of the window as well because this video on the verse and the chorus ended up being 60 minutes long, so I had to split that up as well. At this point, there is no telling how many parts it will take to cover the whole song. Three, four, maybe five or six. All I know is that there is a lot of work to do. Okay, with so much work ahead of us, let's dive in straight away. The guitar is a standard tuning and all you need is a plectrum. As always, with the hybrid picking songs, make sure it's a fairly solid plectrum. Anything below one millimeter is probably going to be too soft to play this style of music. Let's dive straight into the intro. The good news is the intro is only one bar long. The bad news is that is about all the good news you're going to get in this video. Let's have a look at that first opening lick. The opening lick. Now, there's already a lot to be said about this little part. You're starting with a little bar across the third fret, hammering on with the ring finger to the fifth fret, and straight away pulling back off to the third fret of that same bar. Then you move the ring finger to the fourth fret, which might feel a bit strange, this fingering, but the reason Tommy does this is you are meant to keep that fourth fret ringing out as you play the first fret on the B string. So these two notes, fourth fret and first fret, they should ring out across each other. And then you will pull off again with the index finger to the open string. Now for people who this who find this stretch a bit awkward from the ring finger to the index finger, it is perfectly possible to use the pinky as well. The exact same thing. Uh, now this fingering is even trickier in the beginning. So when you come down from that uh, bar chord, putting down that pinky while still having to remove that bar is, is a bit of a, there's a lot of fingers and very little room, uh, but you can let this bar go straight away and head for the index finger. So ring finger or pinky, whatever works for you. And pulling off to the open B string, moving the index finger back to the second fret and pulling off from the second fret again to an open G string. Tommy uses the index finger almost exclusively for this entire opening lick. Everything that is played behind this is all played with the index finger, except for one or two notes. You could also use the middle finger as well, because right away after this note, you have to move back to the first fret on the B string. So Tommy does this. So it's all index finger in this little part. You could just as well use the index finger and the middle finger if that makes it a little bit easier for you. The tempo is quite high. Mm -hmm. 
The same two pull-offs, again pulling off from the first fret to the open B string, from the second fret to the open G string, but now that pull-off from the first fret on the B string to the open string are 30 second notes up until this point and for the rest of the lick everything are, is played in straight 16 notes except for these two pull notes, that pull-off, should be performed twice as fast. Uh, this is how it hold up, holds up in between the rest. So, twice as fast as all the other pull-offs. Ring finger to the 4th fret and then back to the open G string, open B, D string, 2nd fret on the A string and back to the open D string. You could see this as just an arpeggio in the G chord. And then at last you will be ending up with a ring finger on the 3rd fret on the low E string with a plectrum and at the same time using hybrid picking using the middle finger to play the open G string. That's the full intro lick. So that's the full lick. So as I told you, Tommy uses the index finger quite a lot throughout the lick for everything on the first and the second fret. You could change this around and use the index finger and the middle finger if that makes it easier, especially in the beginning of the lick. At that point, it, it feels almost natural to use the index finger and the middle finger, but make sure you shift position fast enough to get to the ring finger on that fourth fret. It's perfectly possible as well, and if the tempo feels high for you, then using those two fingers might take the load of the left hand just a little bit. One more time, really slowly, the original Tommy fingering, and then we are having a look at the verse. That last chord, that bass note plus the open G string, that's the first note of the verse. One last thing for the intro, Tommy uses only the plectrum to play the intro, so all the notes that aren't played with a pull-off or a hammer-on are played with a plectrum. You could also introduce some hybrid picking already here, so for instance, playing that pull-off on the B string with the middle finger, back to the plectrum on the G string, back to the middle finger for that 30 second note part and then back to the plectrum on the G string. So you could switch around with the middle to again take the load of the right hand also just a little bit. Just some afterthoughts. Now let's have a look at the verse and this is where the real fun begins. One time all the way through and then I'll try and explain as well as I can. first chord of the verse already now there is a lot going on in this one first let me take you through the first bar now the first bar is going to be crucial because this is where you will learn about the technical aspect or the technical concept behind what the plectrum is doing endless road is a hybrid picking song but you will be amazed at how little hybrid picking there is going on in this very first part because it is almost nothing almost all the way through everything is played with the plectrum apart from a few notes. We already saw that first opening note, plectrum plus the middle finger on the open G string and then from that point on the next three bars is basically all work with the plectrum. The technical concept is almost the same thing as in the mystery, meaning we're playing a 16 note groove which means that on the beat and exactly in between two beats, one and two and, you're always going to move the plectrum in downstrokes. One and two and one and two and. In between, each note that falls in between that division, between the beat and exactly in between two beats, is going to, play, be, is going to be played with an upstroke. This 
might seem uh, like overkill or overthinking uh, the way you have to play this song but if you try it any other way in my opinion it will not work and especially if you do it the right way your hand will go in a sort of a loose and relaxed strumming motion all the way through your hand is just going to keep moving up and down and as soon as you change one single pick stroke that hand loses that smooth up and down movement and the song is going to get even a lot harder let's have a look at that first bar i'm going to go over it note by note and then as well each and every pick stroke to make sure that it is perfectly clear when you have to use a downstroke when you have to use an upstroke so we're starting downstroke on the low E string together with the middle finger hybrid picking. Those are the first two notes. Then downstroke on the D string, open D string. And then adding in the pinky on the third fret of the B string. Now, maybe let me quickly go over the fingering. All the chord tones you need are the ring finger on the third fret. We'll keep that there all the way through the bar. Then the middle finger, second fret on the A string pinky third fret on the B string and you need an open E string as well so make sure that pinky doesn't fall too flat so you mute that high E string make sure it's nice and upright and you get both that high D and that open E string hybrid picking down stroke on the G string up stroke on the B string sometimes Tommy only catches that B string often he also plays the G string and sometimes even the D string as well in an upstroke. Next bass note is that second fret on the A string, again in a downstroke. As you will see in this uh, transcription, I have transcribed the bass line as going like this. With the D string included. This is sort of the melodic version of Endless Road. Tommy plays this in a whole set of different ways. There is also a more pumping or driving version. And in that version, he sometimes leaves out that second fret and always reverts back to that third fret down below. If you like that sound better, instead of this, you could as well play, always alternate between those two bass notes as well. So again, downstroke on that 2nd fret A string and a downstroke on that chord G string, B string, E string. Again, don't mind too much the exact amount of strings. No worries if you include the open D string as well. No worries if you only catch two of, of those three strings. That's, it, it, it's not really that specific in this case. And then down, up, down, up. That's a quick one in succession. So down on the low E string, up on the D string, down on the G and B string, holding down the pinky. And then for the upstroke, you remove the pinky and play the first fret on the B string. Down, up, down, up. That's a quick movement, so down, for that third beat, down, up, down, up. Then you leave that first fret ringing out as you play again a downstroke on that second fret bass note. And then after you play that downstroke on the bass note, you pull off to the open string. round out the bar with a downstroke on the open B string uh, on the open D string sorry on the open D string and an upstroke on the open G string that open G note that very last note should carry over across the bar line because that is the melody note heading into the next chord so that D string will be muted right away if you go for the next chord but make sure that open G string keeps ringing out as you transfer to the next chord which is an E minor 7th chord now before we head over to that E minor 7th chord one more time really slowly this bar I'm first going to play it really slowly just focusing on what the left hand will do and then I'm going to go over it a second time addressing each and every pick stroke because they are really really important in this one so one more time so you can get a good look at the left hand the 
most tricky part is that holding out for that pull-off on the first fret. Make sure, making sure that that keeps, you keep that in time exact 16 notes. Now for the pick strokes, we're starting out with hybrid picking. Down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, pull off, down, up. One more time, a bit slower. I know it's really a lot, but it, I think it's the best way to get this down. Even slower, hybrid picking to start out with. Down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, pull off, down, up. And then as I said, keep that G string ringing out across the bar into the E minor chord. Now, if this works out for you, if that G chord works, then the E minor chord will be easy as pie because it's the exact same picking pattern, the exact same thing, only moving over an E minor seventh chord. Three, four. Exact, exact same thing. Fingerings are the same except for that low G bass note. We'll now move to the second fret on the D string. If you watch Tommy play this, again, he does this thing where he keeps down those two strings with one single finger. But in this case, it's no problem just to move that ring finger to the second fret on the D string to play that E minor chord. Same trick on that pull off on the first fret. Bass note, pull off. And the rest of the picking pattern is the exact same thing. Only make sure that G note isn't muted when you come from the G chord and you move to the E minor chord. It is possible that the ring finger will touch that G string going to the correct position. But as you can hear, it's doable to leave that string ringing out and that is what should happen. Those two bars back to back really slowly. As I said before, it's two times the exact same thing, but don't overthink those strums. One string the first time, three strings the second time, two strings the next time, it doesn't really matter. As long as that strumming motion or that smooth up and down motion in the picking hand is maintained. Then off to a bit more of a difficult chord, you're ending again on an open G string. <laughs> Again, that G string should ring out across the bar, adding in the thumb over the side of the neck on the first fret. For those of you who dread using the thumb over the side of the neck, I'll uh, give you an alternative uh, fingering in just one second. So open G string, adding in the thumb, first fret over the side of the neck, ring finger, third fret on the D string, and then you will have to add in the pinky right away on the third fret as well. Three, four. There's a little less going on in this bar. I'm ending this bar by strumming up and down. In the second verse, I'll show you a little variation, uh, which includes a little melodic run up to the next chord. So you're playing downstroke on the bass string, downstroke on those first two notes, three, four, down, down, up, again, downstroke, on that F bass note on the third fret, and then an upstroke on the high E string, and again an upstroke on the D string, because those notes are just a little bit spaced out of each other. There is one downstroke in between them. Down, down, up, down, up, up. That's the full picking pattern. A bit slower. Down, down, up, down, up, up. And then for the rest of the bar, it's just strumming up and down. One more downstroke on that low bass note. Down, 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 up, down. So the full bar. Down, down, up, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, up, down. A bit more up to tempo. Three, four. 
that's how it sounds up to speed. Now, for those, uh, sorry, lo lost track of that thumb for a second, you could also just play this with the index finger, no problem whatsoever, but then the switch from the previous chord will have to move a, a little bit faster. Three, four. So, so coming from that E minor chord, using that index finger for that pull-off and then straight away with the index finger to the first fret on the low E string using the ring finger and the pinky for the rest of the chord. Really slowly. exact same thing, you're not changing a note, you're just getting rid of that thumb over the side of the neck using the index finger instead. One more time, with the thumb. One more time, with the index finger. Now, uh, the thing has been changed, only that fingering down below. Second time around, we're, it, it's going to be a bit more difficult to ex exchange that thumb for the index finger, but it is possible. We'll get to that in a second. And we're moving to a C chord, and for the first time since that very first note, we're going to have to use hybrid picking, playing a regular C shape, third fret, second fret, open string, starting with an open B string and hammering straight on to the first fret. over F sharp chord. Now what happens on that C chord is hybrid picking, hammer on, down stroke, up stroke. As you play that last up stroke, you're already leaving out that index finger. Again, a little gap, the, that last G note is bound across the beat and you're playing an up stroke for that last G note. Sorry, that last B note. And again, an upstroke for the next uh, note. So up, downstroke across two strings, a soft strum really. And then again, an upstroke on the second fret. Up, down, up. And on that last upstroke, you're heading for the second fret with the middle finger, adding in the thumb over the side of the neck, going for a D over F sharp shape. Now you're not actually going to play a D chord. You're only playing up stroke, down stroke. A, again, a down stroke across two strings, D string and G string, still holding down that second fret. And ending up in a little section of that intro lick. 30 second notes on the first fret, pulling off to the open string. Second fret again with the index finger on the G string, pulling off to an open string, fourth fret on the D string, and again to the second fret on the G string, ending back up on your opening uh, two notes, so the bass note again with the open G string, ready to head into the second part of the verse. Let me play that last bar really slowly. I'm going to pay again special attention to the pick strokes. So one time, just so you can get a, get a look, get a good look at the left hand. It is again possible to leave out the thumb over the side of the neck here, by the way. So you could play. I would play it like this, using the middle finger and the ring finger, because that way you have the index finger open to start that lick with. Which makes it a lot easier. You could also play it with the index finger and the middle finger, that D over F sharp chord, but then you have to move really quickly to start that single note lick. I think it's easier to use the middle finger and the ring finger. That was with the thumb. One more time with the uh, alt alternative fingering. time. Special attention to the pick strokes, starting out with hybrid picking, hammer on, down, up, 
up, down, up, down, down. And the, the picking strokes of that very last part with the hammer-ons and the pull-offs, that, that doesn't really matter too much. That whatever works for you. But in the strumming part, this is really important. Those were only four bars, so there's a lot to take in here. Now let me play those first four bars really slowly up to this point. Luckily, in the second part of the verse, there is quite a lot of repetition going on. Now first, those four bars really slowly. to that again that very same starting note we started out out with in the first verse now we're going to launch into re repeat the first bar is the exact same thing again the exact same thing now things are changing again to that first fret and again to the first fret, not to an open G string, but we're heading or we're staying on that first fret on the B string to head into the next chord. Now this is going to make that F chord a lot more difficult. One more time. Keeping that first fret on the B string, again ringing out across the bar, adding in the thumb over the side of the neck, again ring finger on the third fret on the D string, and you will have to play a hammer on going on the B string from the first fret to the third fret right away with the pinky. Again, in a second, I'll show you an alternative to this fingering, but it's a bit more complicated than the alternative in the first part of the verse. First, let's go over how this section should sound in the original fingering. Ah, good news, that last part, we already learned how to play that. That's the ending of the first part of the verse. Now that F chord is the only difference. So you're starting out with that uh, C note, first fret on the B string, ringing out across the bar. Three, four, down, down, and get two down strokes right after each other, three, four, down, down, up, hammer on, and again an upstroke on an open E string. So that open E string has to be played while everything else of that chord is kept down. So make sure your posture is right, make sure that pinky is nice upright so that open E string can sound out underneath. By the way, it's that E string that is going to give us a little bit of trouble with the alternative fingering as well. Again, a soft down strum, down stroke on those two, uh, on the D string and the G string. Up stroke on the pinky, moving again with the thumb to the second fret on the low E string, adding in the middle finger on the second fret of the G string. And we're ending back up on that same D over F sharp chord we saw in the first part of the verse. Same lick, and again, low G in the bass, open G string as a melody note. One more time, that section. I'm going to uh, give you each and every pick stroke as I'm going through it. Three, four, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, and hybrid picking to round everything out with. It is possible to play this section without the thumb over the side of the neck as well, but we are going to have to change one thing. And I know we don't like to do that with uh, Tommy songs. You could replace this huge chord with thumb, ring finger, index finger, pinky with a bar, but then we are losing that open G string and we have to replace it with 
a rather happy sounding major chord uh, to be able to play this. So what is going to happen instead of playing index finger and then the thumb, you're going to play the index finger across six strings, so as a bar, adding in the ring finger, third fret on the D string, middle finger, second fret on the G string, which will give you that happy major chord. And then we will again hammer on with the pinky to the third fret on the B string. After you do that hammer on, you have to lift up the bar to get that open E string, which makes it a bit trickier than the alternative in the first verse. And then I would move again with the middle finger to the second fret, ring finger to the second fret, I'm sorry, middle finger, second fret on the low E string, and the ring finger, second fret on the G string. Again, so you would keep that index finger open to start out the single note lick with. One more time, really slowly. Keeping down that bar chord, lifting up the bar after the hammer-on so you get an open E string, keeping down the pinky to the D over F sharp chord and then that fingering is the exact same thing. There's one thing to take in mind, if you transfer to this fingering coming from the E minor chord, then make sure you get that bar in in time because that's a big shift. So you're coming from... So right away, bar across six strings, and in that way it's perfectly possible to play this section as well without the thumb over the side of the neck. We are playing a, a rather happy F major chord instead of that a lot cooler sounding F sus2 chord, but I'm afraid that's the trade-off you will have to make if you uh, can't manage the thumb over the side of the neck. We're ending up this section on a low G string and an open G string, moving to a, just a fill downstroke on two open strings, upstroke on three open top strings, E string, B string and G string. Again an upstroke on a full D chord, ending on a downstroke. That D chord is the transfer into the first chord of the chorus. Again, for that first chord of the chorus, you will have to use hybrid picking. Let me place the, that second part of the verse really slowly. That was the full first verse. Uh, rest assured, the second verse, as well as the ending of the song, is a full repetition. I'm going to show you a f just one little fill in the second verse that you can play if you want to add that in. Notice that there is very, very little hybrid picking going on. Most of this part is played exclusively with the pick, with just one or two places where the middle finger just has to pop out one melody note and then it's straight to the pick again. Let me play that first first all the way through really slowly and then we'll have a look at the chorus. So the end of the first verse seems like a good place to conclude part one of the tutorial. Congratulations on making it this far, there's a whole lot of information to take in. 
get to work on that and next week I will be releasing part two which will cover the chorus as well as a few variations on the verse and the chorus and the link into the first bridge. See you then. Thank you.